Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we were off for a couple weeks. Uh, we were sidelined with some projects that we were taking care of, but now we're back to the truck and uh, we're gonna continue. So as you can see, uh, I've got that front fender on there. It's just a loose fit. It's really just for fitting and I got my flare on there. See, I told you I had some surprises and uh, one of them is we're gonna be putting flares on this baby. So uh, you can see the tire fit does not stick out quite as far as it should. However, we've got more surprises. We got more surprises coming. So believe me, it'll all work out. But today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be painting this side. We're gonna be trimming this out. We're gonna be trimming out the rocker and the jams and get that all done. So as you can see, uh, all the bodywork is done. Everything's blocked out. I've got a coat of black epoxy primer on top of it, primer sealer. We're gonna give it a, uh, a scuff coat with uh, 800 grit paper, wet, uh, wet dry paper, I prefer that. And uh, then we're gonna ready her for paint. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna get to it. So you know, one thing I just wanted to show, you know what, let's take a look at how this inner ca cab mount came out. So take a look at that. I think it's gorgeous. I mean, that's, that's like factory. So I'm super happy with the way that came out. So, and uh, I'm test fitting this fender, or I should say fender flare. Now I had flares on my 98 Ram that were pocket fender flares and they actually weren't for the Ram because they didn't make what I wanted for the Ram. So I retrofitted some Chevy ones. And the way the flare went, it actually went into the door, covered up a little bit of the door, but it worked perfectly because when the door opens, it actually opens, it actually opens uh, like this and opens away from the fender like that, right? So it actually worked out really cool. I may end up doing the same thing here because part of my surprise, uh, we got some tires and rims coming and they're going to be bigger than these. And they're going to be wider than these. It's going to look awesome. But I need to have that critical clearance here. Because that's where these tires rub. Right? Right in there. And if you remember, I trimmed back the rocker. So I've got an additional inch of clearance. So this, this fender may have to go back a little bit. We do have some playroom with it. We've got some squidge room. This is a technical term. To move it back a bit. But this is right now just in concept and fitting, okay? So that's not exactly permanent where it might be, but we're just fitting it for now. So we're going to wet sand this, as I said, with 800, clean it off, mask it, get ready for paint, and we will be back. You see how this baby's coming together? It's just fun. That what seems to be about... Uh, six years of ripping this truck apart and cutting stuff and grinding off rust and everything we have come to painting day finally finally we're going to be painting and today what we're going to be doing is trimming out all the door jams passenger side driver side as you can see they're scuffed they're clean they're blown off, they're ready to go. All the body work is done, she looks beautiful. And uh, we're gonna move forward. So, couple things. Just gonna show you the whole truck here. We're gonna cover the hood because we don't want to overspray on the hood. Here's the driver's side. It's all blown off. I just have to tack it. Make sure there's no dust, or as little as possibly be honest with you. So a couple things when you're painting and you know keep in mind this is not meant to show you how this is professionally done professionally we'd be in a uh, a dust proof booth but this video the point of this video is to show how with some fairly basic skills and tools something like this could be done in your garage and that's what i'm doing I used to paint cars professionally years and years ago, uh, but this is to show you that this can be done uh, on a, 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 and get great results in your garage. So a couple things, we're gonna wet the floor to keep the dust down. Also, when you're painting, a huge important thing is light. You gotta have good light. So 
Uh, I hung a portable light right there, an LED, which is gonna light up everything because you need to see how the paint is going on. That's really important. You need to see how it goes on. So you can see if you're going too wet, too dry. So we're gonna wet the floor, we're gonna start mixing paint and we're gonna start shooting. And uh, we're gonna switch to uh, my GoPro for that. I'm gonna show you how it's done, okay? So, happy times, this is exciting. We'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I'm starting at the back of the truck here. And I'm really limited, as you can see, by the garage door because this truck barely, barely, barely fits in the garage. I had to flatten all four tires. I had to take the garage door opener arm off just to barely get it in there. So uh, what we're doing here, this is the initial coat over the primer. You can see that. And this is, you want to make sure you get a coat on everything. Now, the paint I'm using is a two-stage urethane by uh, PPG. Uh, it's uh, the same paint that's used in auto manufacturing. Uh, I actually started using it initially when I used to paint cars back in the early 80s. Uh, but uh, as I said before, I'm not a professional painter anymore. I gave that up uh, decades ago. But it's kind of like riding a bike. You know, once you, once you have a feel for it, you don't really lose it. You gain it back right away. So it's important to get underneath these rockers because, as I said before, I stripped these down to bare metal and then I uh, epoxy primered them and sealed them. So you want to make sure that you get black over everything. Now, you get to the jam here. Uh, you know, I just look at it like, yeah, people aren't going to look into the jam, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to know it's there. So I want to make sure I can make it look as nice as I can. It's not metal you're going to be wet sanding or buffing. So you just want to lay a nice finish on it. And that's what I'm doing. So... The gun I'm using here uh, is a DeVilvis GTI Pro uh, Special Edition Spray Lin, kind of cool. Uh, and I picked this gun because they put out a lot of material. Now, different painters have different techniques. And when I first started painting, I was using a Binks Model 7 copy. Uh, it was made by uh, Marson. And uh, what I loved about that gun is it put out a ton of material. It had like a 12 or 14 inch fan on it and just put out an, a ridiculous amount of material. And that's how I learned how to paint. Uh, so you really got to move. Uh, you got to be quick. You can't uh, lollygag in one area or you'll run the heck out of everything. But that's how I learned to paint. So um, you move with it. Okay, so I've got the first coat down. I'm just checking to make sure that there's no bare areas. Want to make sure I got a solid coat over everything. And I'm going to go around to the other side here. And I believe I already had one coat on this side. Yeah, I did. Uh, so uh, I can tell there's not a lot of paint left in the gun. We're going to refill it. And there we go. Got it refilled. And I'm going back to put a second coat on the driver's side. I got the gun refilled. I never fill it all the way up. It was about three quarters of the way. Uh, and you better wipe off that hose uh, before you get up on the truck. Hey, yep, there you go. Uh, the reason, because that hose can get wet from laying on the floor, and the next thing you know, you drip some water on the paint, and that stinks. So I'm getting ready to get up on this chair, and amazingly, it's exactly on the hose. What are the chances, right? So I decided to leave that in there to show you. This is real world, folks. Things screw up. So as I'm putting the second coat on here, I want to show you, because you can see in this light, what kind of finish you're looking for. So the worst thing you can do is spray something dry. You can always run, uh, sand out a run, but spraying something dry uh, is terrible. Uh, you can still fix it. It's just a pain. So you can see when I make a first pass here, you'll see the finish looks kind of dull. Uh, and then I'll go back over it and you'll see it'll gloss out like glass. So that's what you're looking for. You want to spray that finish so it's like glass. Okay. 
Now, one of the benefits to two-stage uh, enamel, uh, this kind of paint uh, lays out very, very thin. It's not a thick paint. Uh, it's, it flows out super thin. So while it looks like I'm putting a ton of paint on there, surface-wise, uh, surface it looks like a lot, but film thickness is not, okay? Now, I don't know if you could have heard that, but I could tell by the sound of the gun that I was starting to run out of paint. So we'll add some more. There's the paint, the DBC 9700 uh, by Daltron. Uh, 9700 is black, 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 black. Can't get any more black, just black. And get the reducer in there. And we'll mix that up real quick. And I'm using a mid-tap reducer here because it was about 75 degrees, 75, 78 degrees on the day that I was shooting this. And there was very little humidity. Humidity is bad. You don't want humidity. I sound like Darth Vader in this thing. Now you may want to ask, why isn't he using a strainer? That cap that I'm putting on there in this 3M uh, kit here, uh, these are disposable and there's a super, super fine screen mesh in the top of that cap uh, that will filter out any type of little impurity. So uh, you don't really need strainers anymore. It's all in that top part of that uh, spray gun uh, uh, cup. So here I'm starting back and I'm going back into what I just painted because it's still somewhat tacky. So you can go right back into this and as you can see, it'll gloss right away. I want to make sure I get underneath those hinges. And I'm looking for that gloss. You won't see it on the first pass, but as you go over the second time, that's when it'll, that's when it'll gloss out. And you'll see that nice glassy finish that I'm looking for. Now the vast majority of what I'm painting here, almost all of it, will not be wet sanded. Uh, so I'm trying to lay a nice finish, just to, just, just painting it. I just want to paint a nice finish here, because I'm not going to bother wet sanding or buffing it. It would be kind of crazy. And I believe when I was done with this, I think I did uh, three full coats on the outside of this truck, trimming this out. This is what we call trimming out, okay? You're doing the jams and you trim that out. So as you can see there, see everything is super glossy. And that's what you're looking for. Got to make sure you're getting underneath the rockers. Worst thing in the world would be if you get all this painted and you missed a spot underneath the rockers. So take your time, go slow. You can see I'm gonna go back up the C-pillar here. Now the outside of that C-pillar there, um, that is gonna get color sanded and that is gonna get buffed, obviously. But as I go into the jam there, I wanna make sure I got enough paint on there. You can see, see how the dull spot there turns gloss. That's what you're looking for. And of course, while I'm doing this, I am wearing a, a, a proper respirator. Uh, you have to. Uh, you can't be an idiot and, and spray any type of paint uh, without a respirator. I mean, you got to be safe. You want to save your lungs. So absolutely, I uh, have an improved respirator for this. It's looking good. So the other thing about this paint that I really enjoy is this surface here will be dry within about three to four minutes. Dry to the point where you could touch it. Uh, and that is one of the great benefits of using a two-stage urethane like this in a lousy condition. Because this is, hey, it's a garage. It's not a professional spray booth. There's going to be dust. There's going to be bugs. It's imperfect. The lighting is crappy. As you can see, that's dry to the touch already. And it's only been about five minutes since I shot that. That's amazing.
It's the spectacular thing about this paint, it dries like within a, a couple minutes, literally. It's incredible. Yep, see? I've got the uh, black base coat painted. Uh, I did three coats. Uh, one coat on all the primer sections and then two full coats on the rest of it. Just so nice uniform coverage, you know, and uh, it came out fantastic. The paint that I'm using is a PPG product called Deltron. Uh, it's a DBC and uh, it's a version of a paint that I started using back in the early 80s, uh, which was PPG DBU. Uh, it's a two-stage urethane. Uh, the DBC is the newest uh, version of it. It's an excellent paint and it's outstanding for painting in conditions like this that are less than perfect, uh, you know, that could have dust or bugs or whatever, right? Because this paint dries super, super fast. Uh, literally within about two to three minutes, it's dry to the touch. So I just want to show you what the finish looks like of the base coat. Um, and it's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna try and show you. If you could see that, you see that? See how nice that came out? You see the shine in that? And how nice and smooth it is? Beautiful, beautiful. So, uh, we're gonna let this dry about another 20 minutes. Here's another example. See how nice that is? Beautiful, okay? So we're gonna let this dry about another 15, 20 minutes, and then we're gonna start with our clear coat. And uh, I'm gonna do two coats of clear. It will not be buffed because this is just the jams. So pretty much about how I spray it is about how it's gonna look. Unless something flies into it like a bird or a dog or anything which would require some wet sanding, but that notwithstanding, we'll shoot it and that'll be it. So just want to point out there that that joint is uh, completely perfect. So just want to show you, this is what can be attained. Pretty cool, huh? So we'll be back. Hey everybody, uh, well that's about it for today, uh, but a few points before I go. Uh, I've already had a bunch of questions and recommendations uh, about the project and one of them, a uh, shout out to Tony C, Bluesman Tony C, uh, requested a special video on the products that I'm using on the truck, uh, primarily the paint, the clears, and the primers. So I thought that's an awesome idea, Tony. So I am going to be doing another video uh, coming up soon. It's going to outline the products I'm using. Uh, how I use them, why I chose them, and how they're applied and how they're reduced. So that will be upcoming soon. Uh, I had another great recommendation from Big Rick, Big Rick H, uh, which is uh, how to take the bed off, what's involved. It's a great recommendation. I never thought of that, but um, Rick, uh, you're going to get that video. I'm going to do that for you uh, and show everybody else because I assume people would know this, but no, they don't know that. So thanks, Rick. Uh, and finally, the channel is only about 10 days old and I already have 2,200 views, which is freaking awesome. Uh, totally blew me away. I, I, I didn't expect that kind of response, but, um, but I'm, I'm really grateful and uh, that's just awesome. So please continue to like, subscribe, share, tell your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your dog, your cat. And well, the cat doesn't really care. Uh, so forget the cat. Um, but uh, I'm just uh, doing this channel. Uh, to help people that have these trucks that have rotted out to the point where they think it's hopeless. It's not hopeless. It's not hopeless. Uh, you can do this in your garage by yourself. That's why I'm doing these videos. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, we'll drop another video in the next few days. And uh, we've got big things coming. Big things coming in the future. So uh, this is only going to be stage one. There will be stage two, which is going to get a little crazy. So thanks so much. Happy New Year.